I'd like to believe that we're all going to be well and healthy and happy and, you know, but it's not looking very good. I think it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better. Um, And there's going to be a lot of tragedy ahead in the decades ahead. Um, Humans are going to make it. We inherently are incredibly resilient. So as a species, we're not going to disappear. Um, although I, I'm sure there's a number of other species that would vote us off the planet if they had a vote. Um, but we're going to need to develop the, the work that I do in the world is about trying to reduce the size of those catastrophes, right? Do everything we can and to create as many healthy models for the other side, right? Like, okay, we know that that way didn't work. So it's rather than say, what the hell do we do now? We will have things that we can draw upon because while they may not be scaled fast enough, at least they're demonstrated as proof points of this is how it can be done better. Um, and this is how the world could be. This is how we could make materials that aren't harmful and, and don't um, you know, require lots of energy. This is how we could do healthcare in a way that actually helps people heal. This is how we could build communities and cities in a way that actually gives back to the local ecosystem as opposed to um, just drains the local ecosystem. And so each of our examples and the work that we do are those proof points to say, yes, this is possible. And it's not perfect by any means, but look at what can happen, especially if we start changing the whole system where we can support some more and more of these efforts. I'd love to talk more about that. Um, yeah. You know, what, what those possible future scenarios look like and what the growing pains on the way to get there look like. I think, you know, telling people what potential downsides included in those future versions would help them to kind of mentally prepare for that and, and know that there's a light at the end of the tunnel as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, if you think about what humans have accomplished on some scale, right? We, we put our mind to it and look what we have created, say, in the last 250 years because, and it's been bottom up, right? It's been an emergent phenomenon of all these people moving towards the similar vision. If we put our mind, if we put our minds towards solving climate change collectively, we could solve it in 10 years, right? Like, so there's no question about what's possible. So it is a matter of choosing that, right? And it's choosing it at a holistic, comprehensive space. So you can't be like, oh, I'm all for preventing climate change. Look, I recycle all my packaging and then you're still driving an hour commute every day. Like, just don't bother with the recycling. Like, I mean, the amount of carbon that's coming out of your tailpipe um, far greater than the amount of packaging that you may or may not actually be recycled just because you put it in the recycling bin. And so, but part of that is demanding that we change the whole dynamic, right? You're probably driving that commute for an hour to have a job which you believe is paying you plenty. You may not be very happy with the job, but you've been led to believe that you need the highest paying job. So you go for that, but why do you need that money in the first place other than to consume things that now you have to recycle? So like, like if you just rechanged your whole narrative, like my children and my family, we, have, we only buy used clothing. Like maybe in 20 years of raising them, have I bought them a new item of clothing maybe five times. And we're not wearing rags. Like there's so much good stuff at the Goodwill, right? It's like the most beautiful story ever. You know, it's stuff that would go in the landfill. So you give it a longer life, especially when they're growing up, right? They change clothes all the time. They grow so fast. And you wear it, wear it, wear it. And then it becomes a rag, you know? Or if it still has some life because they've outgrown it, then it goes back to the Goodwill. You donate it back. They apply, provide employment for people that um, wouldn't otherwise be able to get jobs. And they, you know, the money goes to housing. It doesn't go to some corporate executive in Minneapolis, you know, or whatever. Like it's, it's just a beautiful story, but it's, it's, and it's not difficult. It's not a lot of these things, this sort of collective emergence of how we're going to do things differently are not difficult. It's just a choice. And um, it's a combination of embracing that what we, what we do want, 
But you can't just do that in an additive form. You also have to create space to embrace what you want by eliminating that which you don't want. So if you eliminate your two hours of commute, one hour each way, suddenly you have two more hours in your day where you can really spend time exploring the woods with your kids. Right? Or whatever it might be, like there, there's opportunity, as opposed to feeling harried, like the parents you were talking about, like, oh, all my time would been this and this and this and this. Like, to what end? And what can give so you have the space to do that on the other end? Um, and then, you know, standing up for those ideals.